Hi, this is Happy Bird from HappyBirdsCraftingHaven.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful little um, sugar cookie heart and I think it turned out really pretty and um, it really glitters. I used uh, diamond dust for the top and I'll tell you all about that and where I purchased it and um, you can use it for so many things. I made a little tag like card in order to display it and give it as a gift. That was really easy to put together with just basic materials and these pearls here are from the Dollar Tree and um, this is just a piece of an old doily that I had in there and just regular cardstock. Um, I hooked on this card and I made up this little um, poem on the back and of course you're free to use it um, because it came out of my head. <laughs> um, no copyright or anything like that. And it says, From my heart to yours, a little sugar cookie just for you, chock full of love, along with hugs and kisses too. So if you'd like to use that, you can. And um, So I'll show you how to make the card as well. But let me start by showing you how I made this cute little sugar cookie. And I call it a sugar cookie because it reminds me of that when it glitters on the top. It looks like sugar crystals. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And the first thing that I did was um, I took a, a thin little woodsy heart like this. And then I took my gold leafing pen. And if you don't have a gold leaving pen, that's fine. You can get a um, a metallic gold paint pen at the craft store. Um, I wouldn't recommend the metallic gold Sharpie as it comes out a little darker and not quite as bright. But um, use either a gold leaving pen or a metallic gold pen um, paint pen. Okay, so I'm shaking it up a little. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go around the edges like this, just so the sides will be painted. So that's pretty quick. And then you want um, the back of this to be painted. So I just take a toothpick and kind of hold it down and brush even strokes like this. And you're going to want to allow this to dry. And after it dries about 10 minutes or so I'd say, um, you can kind of push it aside until that time. <laughs> I'm pushing it completely off here because I have one that I already did up ahead of time. Now at this point, if you'd like to take like a coat of gloss and put it on the back, that is probably a really good idea because when the heart um, it lays against your skin and if you perspire or anything like that, you just, yeah, it's better just to have a, a coat of gloss on here. And when I say a coat of gloss, you can put a super thin coat of glossy accents on here um, with an old paintbrush, or you can use the Mod Podge uh, Super Gloss. Just put a real thin coat over it. Okay, so um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take a little bottle cap. I just use I collect the little bottle caps off the water bottles and I use them. And I'm just going to put some glossy accents in this bottle cap. And I'm just about running out of this bottle. This is um, by Ranger and I talked about this in my last video, but you can get it at Michael's, Joann's, um, I've seen them on Amazon, eBay, 
And you can also use your coupon if you um, buy it at the craft store. Now, I did a lot <coughs> of testing with the colors, and I found that the colors that were light or pastel actually worked the best um, with the uh, glitter that I used on the top of the heart. Uh, the pastel colors or the light colors, um, it just really brought an sh extra shine to it um, when I used this particular glitter, and I'll talk to you more about that. So the reason why I use this, it's a little bit, a little bit brighter than um, the pastel, pastel pink, <laughs> um, but it still worked really well. But I just used what I had on hand, and it's ultra fine. It's important that it's ultra fine. Um, this is Recollections brand in the color blush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it and pour a little bit on top, just kind of tap it on this resin, about like that. Got to be careful because you don't want it to pour out all at once. It's easy to do. That's why I'm just kind of tapping it a little at a time. And I'm putting on about, mm, about that much. Okay, then I'm going to take my toothpick and just stir it around like that. And I'm also getting around here on the edges where the powder may have fallen and just kind of scoop that out. Mix it up too. Just make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Okay, when you think it's mixed enough, you're just going to pour it here in the middle of the heart. Like so. You're going to take the end of the toothpick and just kind of spread it out to the edge, like so. And I like the fact that this is kind of thick because it just kind of sits there when you spread it to the edge. It doesn't run over or anything like that. Just gonna pull this to the edge. And you can also take a little stick like this if you want. Kind of get it all if you don't want to mess with the toothpick. See that gets a lot more of that out of there. And we're just pulling it right to the edge with the end of the toothpick. Right to the edge. Just take your time. It's nothing that has to be rushed. Make sure you pull it down to the point there. I kind of want to try to cover up the gold in the front that I marked around the edges because I don't really want the gold to show. The only place I really wanted the gold to show was around the very edge of the heart. 
Okay, so we're taking our time. Yeah, and I think it's looking pretty nice about now. Pulling, pulling, pulling to the edge. Same thing here. Okay. Thank you for your patience with that, but I just kind of wanted to show you the whole process. You know, I didn't want to take any shortcuts. Okay, so now I'm taking the fine glitter by Recollections called Glitz. And it has kind of a, a pinky tone in it, kind of a pinkish tone. And I'm just putting the tiniest amount in my hand, as you can see, because I'm not really going to pour the glitter on. I just want to sprinkle it on the top just to give it a little extra sparkle there. And then I'm going to come in with my diamond dust. Now I'll give you the link as to where I bought this. I bought this from a gal on eBay and it was a little under six dollars for this bag but this bag really will go a very very long way as I'll show you. And basically what it is is it's glass glitter and or some may know it by German glass glitter. Um, they used to carry the glass glitter in the Recollections brand at Michael's, but when I went there the last time, the gal um, told me, uh, the, one, the one who worked there, told me that they stopped carrying it due to safety reasons. So, I mean, this doesn't cut me or anything like that. So I'm thinking maybe if you had it on your hands and rubbed it in your eyes or were careless or something like that, you know, I could see where that would be a safety issue. Um, I avoid actual contact with it for that reason, but I'm, go I'm going to show you what I did. I just reached in like this with a little wooden popsicle stick and I just shake it over like this. On the top and I'm just going to allow it to dry overnight and when it dries then I mean completely 100% thoroughly overnight then I'm just going to turn this upside down and just brush it off lightly with a soft uh, paintbrush or something like that because with this glossy accents this glitter will really adhere um, to um, to this, so it'll be fine. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't even make a dent. So um, I'll go ahead and close this bag up. Okay, so we're going to allow this to dry, like I said, overnight, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish up the heart and how to make the little um, tag that goes with it and I was thinking about testing uh, this out and making another heart in a light gold. I don't think a dark gold would look very good but I was wondering about this um, light gold by Recollections. It's extra fine glitter and it's called champagne. That's the color of it. I don't know if you can see in the light, just how light it is. I know sometimes golds and silver, um, they turn out a little differently on camera. But I think I'm going to do a tester one just for tonight. And when I come back and show you this heart, I can show you how the gold one turned out too. Because I think um, a gold sugar cookie heart would also look pretty on this card. So um, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, so we allowed this to dry overnight and as you can tell it has a lot of beautiful sparkle and shine to it and the diamond dust really looks nice on it on the outside. So I think this turned out really pretty. Um, we did an experiment with the champagne gold and I think it turned out really pretty. It looks very vintage to me. Um, however, I was a little surprised that the heart looked a little darker. 
than the glitter that um, I put in there. So I think maybe it's the um, diamond dust that's playing off certain colors in the glitter that makes it appear a little darker, but it still turned out very beautiful. I think I'm going to be looking for um, a rose gold extra fine glitter and see how that turns out as well. So this is just a little tip. Every once in a while, not often, but every once in a while when um, the glossy accents is drying, sometimes if you barely touch the top, the top might seem dry, but underneath it's still drying. So you might notice where there's a dip here and there. Well, you can come in with a little tiny popsicle stick like this if that happens. And just with the slightest amount of pressure you can do this all the way down. And you don't need to hardly put any pressure at all. Just barely the top like this all the way down. And it evens it out and it makes it look really nice. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I had this happen with this one. Not this heart, but this one. And I did this and see how even everything is around the sides. So anyway, um, that's just a little tip. So we're going to put a glue on bale in the back. And if you're looking for these bales, uh, when you go on eBay or Etsy, you'll type in the words glue on necklace bales. And these will pop up. And this will have a little hole where you can slide the necklace in this direction. Um, this particular bale I think is 11 millimeter, but I'll double check as far as the height. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, yeah, 11 millimeters high. And at the widest part of this bale, it is about 6 millimeter. Okay, so um, I'll give you a little rough idea. So what um, we're going to do next is we're going to put some E6000 on the back of this glue-on bale. And we're just putting a tiny amount. really doesn't need much at all. I just push this glue up to where there's just a tiny bit at the top. And then I just kind of swipe it like so. You don't need a lot. You don't want a whole bunch running out of the edges or anything like that of the bale. So I'm going to try to make it nice and even. Press it down a little. Okay. So we're going to allow that to dry. Um, I would say a minimum of 12 hours and I know that it'll feel dried um, by that time but I just like it to, to really set. It would probably even be better overnight but at least 12 hours. Okay so I'm going to allow that to dry a little bit and then we will put the chain in. So now I'm going to show you how to make the tags. This is very easy. You're going to need a piece of plain pink cardstock and you can buy this at any craft store. They'll probably have it in their open uh, cardstock. So just pick up a piece and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of our craft tags and here, let me get a paper towel for this part. I don't want it to get on the cardstock, but I want to show you this. I'm going to take some Elmer's glue, glue stick. I like the purple because the purple really shows up. And you're going to rub this quickly all over the tag, making sure to get the edges as well. You don't want it to dry out, especially these edges. Okay. And 
then you're just going to lay this down on a piece of the pink cardstock and just press it down. I don't see any purple glue coming out of the edges or anything, but I'm just going to run this paper towel around just in case. Like that. All right, and then I'm going to take some scissors. I'm going to make a rough cut first. Like that. Then I'm just going to lay my scissors against um, the cardboard and cut like so and I like this shape tag because you can make clean cuts which is nice if you don't get it 100% you can always go back and trim it up. Okay, there's a little bit here that I missed here and there. So I'm just going to lay my scissors against the cardboard and cut. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, that's the front. So then you can go in and take your hole punch and punch the hole like that. Now you're going to do the same thing on the back part. So I'm going to take my glue stick. Whoops, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put down my paper towel underneath. Wrap the glue stick all over, making sure the edges, especially, are covered well. And you're going to turn this over to a piece of the cardstock, press it down. Run along the edges just in case there's any glue stick left on there. Like so. And the purple will dissipate anyway as soon as it's dry. And you can allow drying time, of course, before you actually cut this out. I'm just doing this um, right away simply because I, I know that you don't have time to sit there and watch it dry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come back in and I do the same thing. I do this by feel more than anything else because I can feel when my scissors hit the edge right there, the cardboard, and then I cut. And then I come back in to clean up my edges if I missed any little slivers. And it actually looks pretty good. I see how I just lay my scissors along the edge. Okay, and then I'll come back in with my hole punch again and punch the other side like that. Okay, so <clears throat> now you're going to allow this to dry before you put on the edges. Um, 
So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my my gold leafing pen and once again you can use a metallic gold paint pen in place of this. And I'm just going to get it started. And I'm going to make a gold border all the way around. Like so. Like that. There. So that looks pretty good. Alright. So, um, I'm going to put the cap back on this. Well, not that cap, but... <laughs> this one. Okay, so now I'm going to blow on it a little bit. Make sure it's dry. Okay, make sure it's nice and dry. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take a piece of the doily and it can be any size doily, it doesn't have to be a little one like this. You just want to um, make sure the rounded part is at the top, like that. So what I did was I just took my glue stick and I started in the left hand corner, just kind of made a half circle like this. And filled it in like that, see? Making sure that you get a lot of the glue around the edges. That will be important. And then I'm just going to kind of line this up a little bit like that and press down on it. And just allow that to dry for a few minutes. And then you're going to come back in and pick this up and turn it over in the back. And then cut flush up against the edges. And like I said, let this dry. The only reason I picked it up right now um, is simply because I didn't want to sit here and, want, and have you guys wait for it to dry. Alright, so when you cut that part off, then you'll have this, like so. And of course, once again, all that purple dissipates, so you don't have to worry about anything here showing in between um, the open spaces, okay? And see, we still have enough, so even with this little tiny 4-inch doily, You'll be able to get three tags out of that if you're careful. Yeah. Okay. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a strip of pearls at the bottom. And I bought these pearls from the Dollar Tree. These are kind of a cream color. They had these in a pretty aqua color. Um, they had them in green, red, purple, and um, of course these cream colored ones, but I just picked up the plain cream colored pearls, but they're actually pretty nice. Um, they come in strips like this, which is also handy. And for this tag, I think I used eight. I'll double check and I probably should have just cut that instead of yanking it off but <laughs> okay part you have to be careful about is these are quite sticky so don't lay it down and then try to adjust it because it's not going to work you want to make sure that you're holding both ends and 
that you have this somewhat centered in the middle. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You don't want to press down on it, that's for sure. Okay. So, thinking right about here. Okay, now you can press down. Like I said, these are pretty sticky. I'm surprised actually coming from the Dollar Tree, so and I thought it really gave it a nice touch. Now I'm going to turn this over in the back, and I printed out my little poem. So I'm going to take my pinking shear scissors. Cut it out like this. thinking that this will look okay if I just glued it right here. So, um, take my glue stick again. Put this underneath. So I don't get glue. Get all the edges. And just lay this down in the middle. See, just like that. So the next thing we're going to do is since this is a necklace, I'm going to cut a little slit here. And a little slit here, as you can see here, just to put the necklace chain in. Not going to make it very long. Just going to make it short and do it at an angle, maybe a fourth of an inch in. Just do your best. And I was thinking, if you were planning on making earrings or something like that, you could probably punch a couple of tiny holes in here, it might go through this part here, but I think you could still read it. Okay, and so the last part is your ribbon. So, I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon here, and fold this in half, like that, and then I'm going to fold this in half back so I can slide this through and then open it up and then push these two pieces through that and then kind of pull it at the top and separate the pieces and kind of pull this way. Okay, so now I'm going to make a little bow. And if you were just making these tags for gifts, you would not, um, you could make a bow, but I would definitely leave this part a whole lot longer. And you may have to just kind of adjust things here and there.
As you all know, I'm not very good with bows. Okay, I'm thinking that's about right. So, now I'm going to snip a piece at an angle like that. Try to match it up with the other side. put a little no fray at the ends, or I should say stop fraying. It's by Aliens. If you don't have this, you could use any kind of clear glue or white glue that will dry clear. And I just put a little tiny dot like this. And just touch the edges all the way down. It doesn't take much to do this at all. And then just do the same on the other side. And this will dry clear. Like that. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to allow that to dry, and like I said, it'll dry clear. So um, now we'll go ahead and put our necklace on this card. Okay, so I slipped this gold-plated chain through the bail, and then I picked up my card, and I just kind of wiggled these little areas here where I put the cut, like that, um, because we're going to take this and just going to loop this chain a couple of times like this and we're going to slide it into um, these little slits here in the card and I have one like this and I'm pull this back until it's about the height that you want your heart to lay right here on the front so I think about like that so I'm going to slide that in there. Okay, so now I have this in the back, like this. And this, like that, on the front. And so here we have it. And I also made a card using um, a silver doily and with the pearls. So, And I outlined it in silver as well. So I thought you'd like to see that. And that's about it. So I hope you really enjoyed this craft. Um, this is really pretty easy to put together. It's just a matter of, you know, allowing a little bit of time here and there to dry. So I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, God bless each and every one of you for watching. Bye-bye.